Hi, welcome to the Quadology channel. I wanted to put together a short video, which is hopefully useful, around how to hydro dip um, EPP foam. I'm going to um, hydro dip an S800 and thought I'd film it in case anybody's interested in doing it. So, um, for anybody that doesn't know, hydro dipping is a process where you have a print of some kind, this is actually clear flames, uh, and transfer that onto an object that can be any shape. You can see this is a test piece, test section of wing I've done, done on uh, for a bit of S800. I've got a couple of other examples. This is a um, chassis for a Kraton 1.8 scale car, actually. You can see it's sort of green flaming skulls, which has come out really nice. Uh, but you can do any sort of shape object. That's a QX7. Um, again you can see it and it wraps around and the way the process works is pretty simple you get a bucket well a container with some water in the water temperature is important it needs to be well technically between 28 32 degrees I tend to do it slightly warmer and then whatever your choice of film is which you can buy from a hydrographic supplier there's hundreds of different films and patterns you'll find that the film is basically PVA sheet, like PVA glue, but in, in a sheet that's dried, with uh, a print on one side. And you'll often see one side shiny, one side's matte, if, if they're both similar. If you lick your fingers and just pinch it, you'll see it sticks to... One side sticks and one side doesn't. The side that sticks is effectively, that's the PVA sheet and the film is on the the print is on the opposite side. So what we're going to do is get a container of warm water, lay this sheet down on it with the sticky side, the PVA side down. The PVA will basically dissolve on the water. We then have a chemical called hydrographic, hydrographics activator that you can get in aerosol form. Spray that on it after it's had a sort of minute to soak in for the water. That will kind of dissolve it so it just leaves the ink floating on the surface now when you're doing that obviously you need to lay it on carefully and the trick is you don't you want to try not to have any air bubbles underneath and you can tap the film while it's on the water to kind of get the air bubbles out but if there's an air bubble under there that's obviously a pocket between the water and the film so that spot of film isn't getting a isn't absorbing the water and isn't dissolving so that section won't stick to whatever your object is and you want to make sure that when you put it on it's floating on the top you don't have water on the top of the film because if you come to dip your object and there is water between this and the film obviously that water is going to act as a barrier and stop the film from sticking so even though you're dipping it into a tub of water the item has got to be dry when you're putting it in and then the film will, will stick to it. The other thing to bear in mind is when you're putting it in, you want to put it in at an angle through the surface of the water, through the film, so the air, any air can run up the side. And you need to think around how any air is going to get captured. So you can see that's got a slot in it. If I was to put it in like that, potentially air is going to get stuck in there. And then you, again, like the water, you've got air between the film and the object and the air is going to stop the film the print sticking to it so you need to have a think around what's the best way you can put it through without trapping any air the other thing to be aware of is if you've got holes on your object ideally you want to block them over put some tape over them clearly because that's on the surface I don't want to put tape over that because then when you peel it off you'll have a mark you could put it on the other side but effectively what will happen is, as you push it through the surface of the water and the, the, the print, the water can rush through that hole and stretch and distort the print. Now, if you're doing it slowly, then that will minimise it a little bit, but in an ideal world, you'd block the backup. So before you can hydro dip something, normally you would give it a light sand for a plastic or a metal object. You'd give it a light sand, um, undercoat it, give it a light sand, um, or give it a light sand and then undercoat it, and then you would play, um, spray it with uh, a kind of an adhesive to help 
the, the iPhone stick. What I've done with a bit of experimenting with trying to dip the foam is, I'll just grab it. I have sanded the foam just really lightly to get off the mould residue from the EPP mould. Uh, I just used 180 grit sandpaper with my uh, <laughs> kind of makeshift sanding block, which is a run cam box, works quite well. You can just fold the edges over and push it in. I've just given that a really light sand just to get the mould off the surface. Uh, and then I've given it a coat of 3M90 spray this is backwards because <laughs> I'm using the front facing camera. Uh, ridiculous. 3N90 spray uh, adhesive. Now I've given that a coat and let it dry. Because you've sanded it, you need to be sure that you don't go too crazy on the adhesive because it will seek into the foam. So you could just keep spraying it on and you're just adding weight to it. Um, and then once that's done and it's had, I left it 24 hours to dry, you can then dip it. So if I grab the wing, so this is the S800 I've just put together to spray it with adhesive and I don't think the adhesive is going to come out on the camera, you can see it very finely, you can, you can feel it on it. Uh, and what I've done with this is I haven't stuck the wings on, I've just put those on to spray it because you could dip the whole thing but you obviously need a pretty big tank to be able to put an 800mm wing in. So it's just easy for me to do it in sections. It does mean the pattern won't necessarily match on the joins, but I'm okay with that. Um, if you did it in one piece, obviously you could use one piece of film, it would be one continuous pattern. So before I dip it, I've just done uh, a few bits of prep. So I've put some um, reinforced tape along the leading edges. I've cut out you can probably just see something under there. I've um, cut out a slot in the wing for an airspeed sensor. I've also um, cut out a hole for where GPS is going. Um, I'm using a side feed on a VTX antenna that's going to go in there. And uh, in the main section, I'll take those rods out. I have uh, cut the nose off completely because I'm going to be using a 3D printed nose that I've designed. Uh, I've also cut a hole in the section on the rear, again I've covered it up, which I'm going to have a rear facing camera in, but basically I've gone through, cut everything that I need to cut out of the foam, or at this point, because I wanted to cut it out now, put some tape over it, I don't know if this will work, but I'm going to try and dip it with the tape on, and then peel the tape off, put whatever in, so in this case the airspeed sensor in, and then put the tape down and hopefully continue the pattern. We'll see if that works, I've not tried that before. And once that's all done and I've built the wing and put the electronics in, uh, I'm then going to laminate over it, uh, which it will need because the hydrogen ink is just ink on the surface, so it's not going to be that tough, so you do want to, you will want to laminate over it. The, uh, in terms of why hydro dip instead of painting really it just gives you a different finish or i guess the other advantage is it's a thin layer of ink so it's less weight than um, painting it uh quite clearly but uh i mean i'm gonna i mean with air speed sensors and other bits i'm adding to this it's not going to be the lightest anyway but um potentially hydro dipping instead of painting would keep the weight down of, of your wing so with everything done, so these have all been sort of sanded, sprayed with this 3M90 adhesive. Um, I've got this 3M tape because I wanted to put that under it so it's not so obvious. Uh, sorry, the 3M tape, the reinforced tape. Uh, I think we're ready to, to go and dip these. So I'm going to go and fill up a tub of water and we'll see if I can um, film, film the dipping so you can see how, how it works and what to look for. So I've cut the film to size, you can see that it wants to, because it comes off a roll, it wants to continuously roll up. When you put it in the water, it seems like the warmer the water is, the more it's going to want to curl in the water as well. So to stop that, what I'm going to do is, masking tape would probably be better, but just run a piece of tape down each side of the film, and that will help 
it won't stop it completely but that will help stop it curling up if you would frame it completely in tape that would really help but i'm just going to do the sides and that should be sufficient for for what i'm doing here so i've taped the sides up i don't think you can see that particularly well on the camera and that's just helping keep it a bit flatter for the dipping process obviously you want the film a bit bigger than your object but double check that it does fit in whatever container you're using before you go ahead and, and start because once you put it in the water you're not going to be able to change that and then um, really you want to get your water between 28 and 32 degrees centigrade this is you can't really see on this there's no way you, i can demonstrate this but this is quite thick PVA film you get some films that are thinner this is quite a thick one so just to help it on its way dissolving I'm going to um, use a slightly warmer water uh, from kind of a, the, the practice run I did 36 degrees seemed to work really well for this so I'm, I'm going to aim for ballpark that temperature plus or minus a couple of degrees and then we can get on with dipping so I've got my tub of water I'm at 35.9 36 degrees um it's a little warm but as i mentioned i've got quite thick film so i'm happy with the water a bit warmer and then i should mention you want to wear gloves uh hide your thing your hands is a nightmare to get off uh and again i've taped the edges of the film to stop it rolling up and I know the shinier side is the PVA side that's sticky when I lick my fingers. So that is going face down on the water. So I'm going to just lay this on the water and get rid of any air bubbles. And you can see that's starting to dissolve with the water. Uh, I'm just going to pull that out gently. Well, I failed on two counts there. I've got a slight little crease, uh, which hopefully will float out. I've also got a couple of drops of water on it, but I'm going to run with it. Uh, so you can see that's starting to smooth out so we're going to give that well at least a minute probably closer to two i think a lot of people recommend a minute depends on the film how warm the water is uh, a lot of different variables generally speaking i think it's better to have it on for 30 seconds longer than not enough so while that's doing i'm going to get the activator and give that a good shake So I've tried a couple of activators now. I'm using activator from it's from the UK. You can't read the brand. It's called Dip This Hydrographics Activator. Not really thrilling video watching me shake a can, but... Oh, the other thing to mention is, I do have a kind of a, a mask. Do do this in a well-ventilated area, the activator's horrible stuff and you don't want to be breathing it in. So, I think that's had long enough. I can see that's gone flat on the surface and we're going to give that a couple of passes of activator uh, until it starts to look glossy and then when the activator starts working you'll see the ink sort of expand across the surface of the water as the film dissolves
And then I have the wing. I'm only going to dip one side to start with. So I've put tape along the edges so the pattern doesn't fold over. And then I'm going to put that in, pass that through at an angle. So, there should we go. And then when you've got it under the water, you can just give it a shake to get rid of the excess. Making a mess here. I'd like to do this outside. <laughs> In a kind of lean to it's raining. And then you can see how that looks. Now I need to go and rinse this under cold water for sort of five, ten minutes to get rid of uh, the PVA film. There's obviously a kind of a slimy PVA residue on this, so I need to rinse that off. So that's what I'm going to do now. So I've um Rinse that for about five, ten minutes under lukewarm water. It doesn't feel slimy. I've just dabbed it with some kitchen roll just to, to kind of dry it off. Uh, I'm pretty pleased with how that's come out. Um, as you can see, sort of compared to the original original one. You could clearly paint this and the clear would show whatever colour paint or you could use coloured hydrodip. Uh, and then on the back where I've put the trim, you can see I've got a sort of sharp edge. So when this is completely dried, I'm going to do it the other way around. And I'll do the bottom section. I did have a bit that came over where I'd not should have masked it further back, but I could sand that off if I wanted to uh, before going any further. Um, that's that's really sort of the key thing to to hydrate it there. Clearly, you want to make sure that this is properly dried, probably for 24 hours before you do anything else to it. Um, certainly, I don't want to be dipping this side until the foam is completely dry and and this is dry, so so damaging the side that I've already done. Uh, and then once once it's done, I'm going to build the wing, put all the wires in, and then laminate it, and that will um, protect it nicely. Uh, the only other thing to say is just every time you dip, make sure that you're using clean water. You don't necessarily need to replace the water every time, but you do need to get out all the old bits of film that are floating around because they're going to stick in. And then I think if you see here, you can see there is where I had a bubble of water on top of the film and that stopped it from sticking properly so that's the sort of effect you'll get but with a pattern like that's quite hard to show out this is also going to actually have um, some custom cut vinyl over it so i'm sure i can position things very carefully to cover up any blemishes that i'm not happy with but uh, overall i think that has come out pretty well i'm very pleased with that uh, so now just to do the the other wing uh, and, the, and the fuselage I'm going to go again. I've taped the edges of the film, um, shiny or sticky side down, and then we're going to place that on the water. Have cut this film a little bit wider, really, than would have been ideal. I'm just layering that down so it floats and we're not trapping air under there. You can, I don't know if you can see on the camera there's a bubble there, so I'm just going to tap, tap that to the edge, get the air bubbles out. Fortunately, because it's at the side it couldn't expand out, now I've got this little crease here, but that should be fine. Again, there's another air bubble here. You want to try and tap any air bubbles to the edge. I'll just bounce along under the film. You can pop those out, obviously. There, there's any air bubbles. The film is not going to dissolve and therefore will not stick. Okay, so I think we're good. You can hopefully see in the camera that's starting to go flat. Still some creases here. This fold is a bit of a pain. That's my fault for making the film too big. I'm not going to stretch that out. That's, that's fine. Once, once it's done, I think uh, that'll be okay. And you can see this is starting to go perfectly flat. So you want to leave it for kind of 60 seconds upwards. Um, this is quite thick film, so a little bit longer. Uh, my water here is actually about 37 degrees. That's a bubble there. 
I'm not too worried about the edges. A bit frustrated by that crease, but I'm going to run with it. I'm going to have um, some vinyl on the wing and uh, basically too late to do that again. So, uh, right, we're ready for some activator. So, have them in a kind of good shape. Now, you want to do this in a well ventilated area and probably with a mask on so you're not breathing in the fumes. That should be. I think that is just enough. I'm gonna go slide one more pass, I think. And you can I don't know if you can see that film. It's sort of expanding, it looks like the ink's on it. Now I'm gonna pass this through at an angle. And then give it a bit of a shake to get rid of the excess. There we go. Again, now I need to rinse to get rid of the PVA slime. So that's the top of the second wing done. I've rinsed that under lukewarm water to get rid of the slimy PVA residue that's on it. Give it a good rinse uh, in sort of lukewarm water to get the slimy PVA off. It does take a while. You can gently kind of rub it when you're getting it off. Don't put it under a high pressure tap because while the, the ink's drying, you potentially could wash that off. So I'm going to wait for those two to completely dry before I do the other side. If this is at all damp the ink the film will not stick to it so you've got to make sure it's dry beforehand um, so I'd leave it a good few hours to make sure it's it's properly dry and then what I'll do is I'll put some masking tape across the edge of this uh, to make sure the film doesn't wrap around just just gently because I don't want to pull this ink off so hopefully that's been helpful something you might think about giving it a go Again, it's a um, fairly simple process, just time consuming, filling up the water. I like to change the water after I dip things and then waiting for things to dry and the, the preparation. But the actual process itself, um, just make sure you've got the film the right way around, the sticky side facing down on the water. Water should be around 32 degrees, 28 to 32 degrees centigrade. I'd like it a little bit warmer. I go for sort of 36, 37 degrees and the film I've got is fairly thick helps it dissolve. Uh, make sure you don't get any water on top of the film uh, because it'll stop the item sticking and make sure you put it through at an angle because if you trap a big air bubble underneath the obviously you're going to get air between the object and the ink and it won't stick. The other thing that I should have mentioned is that when you're putting the activator spray on you want just enough to get the film to start dissolving. You can usually see it spread out, start to spread Kind of expand a little bit um, but you don't want to go crazy because if you put too much on you'll see it goes really glossy it will stop it sticking because you're basically leaving too much activator on the film and that's going to create a barrier between the ink and your object which you don't want either so give it a few practice runs before you dip whatever you want to dip worst case scenario you could give it a light sand to sand it off and do it again um, or if you get the odd blemish you could strategically place a, a sticker or a bit of vinyl on it i'm sure to cover it up so um if you'd like to see the wing finished obviously when this is laminated it looks fantastic um please do subscribe to the channel um really appreciate the encouragement like leave a comment uh, there's also a quadology page on facebook which uh, if you want to like and follow and i'll post all the different things i'm working on um various kind of projects that you can see see what's happening so again thanks for watching